What's on my desk today? Well, today we're going to take a look at the Pioneer archetype. This is a really great archetype. I will take a look at this astrologically. We will see what makes a pioneer just by looking at an astrological chart. Isn't that amazing? Now, what is a pioneer? Well, we've got here the light attribute. This person has a passion for doing and creating what has not been done before. And I've got a few case studies that we're going to go through. We're going to take a look at the rules that we want to find in someone's chart, the astrological rules that we want to see. We're going to take a look at the case studies and we're going to take a look at their charts. So that's what's in this episode. Now, I wasn't going to do the Pioneer Archetype uh, this soon into the series. I had planned after the Artist Archetype that we will take a look at the Writer next. But I have shuffled this one up in the lineup because of one of your questions. One of your questions was so brilliant from last time. We studied the artist, of course, and you've got this great question. And this is the question that made me bring the pioneer up. You'll see why. So the question is, what about the nakshatras? You say, I have Mercury in Purva Falguni, a Venus ruled nakshatra. But other than that, no obvious Mercury Venus connections. My whole life revolves around creativity. I paint, write, and work in a creative environment. Absolutely. This is a great question. Yes, you can definitely take a look at the lordships of the nakshatras. Okay, so definitely do that. And I should uh, factor that in if I can. But what I'll do is I'll kind of keep doing these episodes as they are inspired and guided you know, in, in my process, but as you go through, please do look at the nakshatras as well. That's a really good thing to do. There are a lot of archetypes that we're going to take a look at. So if you don't see yourself in one of them, please don't be worried because we've got, I mean, this is an 80 card deck. We could potentially easily have 80 episodes here. So there are quite a lot of archetypes to go through. And at some point you will see yourself Okay, and what I'm hoping for is that this series is a really good series for reflecting on your chart. So looking at your chart, looking at your life, looking at the rules that I bring up, looking at, you know, um, as well, just looking at what the archetype is. You don't have to have the archetypal pattern in your chart or, or the rules or any of that for you to be that thing. Okay, so please don't be limited by anything that I'm going to say in any of these episodes. Uh, definitely don't be limited by what I say, because if you, you know, if I talk about these pioneers and if you resonate with that and you like that and you start to study these people and, you know, your desire will lead you to what it is that you want to do. And that's an important thing. I've got a couple of notes here about how to kind of work with this series. So the first one is I've got don't judge yourself too quickly. Um, don't say, oh, well, I don't have that in my D1 chart. So that means I'm never going to be that. Is that how this works? No, no, not at all. Um, we're going to look at the pioneer today. And the first pioneer that I've got, she is exactly like my viewer. She is, uh, so I'll show you this, this the first person that we're going to have a look at here in the pioneer archetype could easily write this line. My whole life revolves around creativity. I paint, write, and work in a creative environment. The first pioneer that we've got today does exactly that. She paints, writes, works in a creative environment. Her whole life is creative. So, and she doesn't have the artist archetype in her birth chart. Okay, so she's just like my viewer potentially. So with this series, don't write yourself off too quickly or don't judge yourself too quickly or don't say, oh, no, I don't have that archetype. Does that mean, you know, no. It, it, it. Because there could be something far bigger that you're meant to do. Okay, so this is the thing about labels. Labels are really interesting, titles and labels. And this was something that Karl Lagerfeld hated. He hated labels. And that's one of the reasons I really like him as an artist well we should look up his chart is he an artist i'm trying to remember he's got a lot of leo but um 
this thing about labels, he hated labels, you know, and I, I really uh, resonate with that. I hate labels, but look at me, I'm creating a whole series of <laughs> labels and archetypes. And I know I am kind of doing that here, but this is my creativity. <laughs> this is, you know, my creative expression of uh, structuring and identifying patterns. And I'm enjoying that in my life very much through this wonderful tool of astrology. So I'm kind of enjoying this process here and this is my creativity, but I don't allow myself to be uh, limited by a label at all. I don't want to be put in a pigeonhole or you're this or something like that, you know. And the thing to look at here with this archetypal series is that maybe you want to be an artist, but maybe, maybe you're actually a pioneer. Maybe you're something far bigger. You know, maybe you need to broaden your own view of yourself. And that's one of the things I love about astrology. For me, that's what astrology has done for me. It broadened what I thought I could be capable of. Okay, so it, for some people, some people use astrology to kind of limit themselves. Um, but some people can equally use astrology to broaden like you know your um the ceiling becomes far higher and you see oh my god I could do so much more you know and I'm hoping that that's one of the things that happens in this in this series we are going to go through some tough archetypes in here too we are going to have a look at things um you know yeah shadow archetypes and things like that so so with all of these, I'll try to disclaimer them the best way I can. I don't want anybody to kind of feel limited or uh, no, hope, hope, what I'm hoping for is that maybe you'll encounter the pioneer archetype and you'll think, wow, I'm, I could be so much more than an artist. Maybe I could be a pioneer. Maybe I could, you know, be this or that or, or you know, and you might expand uh, as a result of studying these archetypes. And when it's something shadowy, that's a good thing too because it's good to study that as well because then we can see what we've been holding on to and we can see what's been limiting us and we can see, gosh, I've been carrying that around my whole life. You know, wow, maybe I need to let that go. So hopefully through this series, um, you know, we just get some really good points for contemplation and reflection and we can see ourselves in new ways and, and through the chart we can use our chart to see ourselves in new ways, to study ourselves in new ways, to get a new angle on the same old thing. That's what I'm really hoping for. Now, the other thing I wanted to say as well is that um, please do look at your divisional charts. So I'm going to bring up a Jyotish dashboard, which I don't have on my phone actually, but I think I've got it on my iPad. I have used it in the past. It's absolutely brilliant. Now this software is free and you can just get that Jyotish dashboard and it'll allow you to look at your divisional charts. So with this series, you will want to look at your divisional charts and the charts in particular that you want to look at are D10. You want to look at D10, you want to look at D9, um, D45, even D60, you can look at too. Uh, what other things? You can even look at like D7 if you wanted to. If you're an artist, that's quite relevant because that's what you give birth to. Um, you know, things like that. Or if you're a writer or, well, if you're a pioneer, we're going to meet some pioneers right here, right now. So let's get into that. The other thing I also wanted to say is that um, don't be limited by your chart. Follow your desire. Now, how do you follow your desire? Well, your chart can actually help you with that as well, because your Rahu placement will show where it is that you want to go in this incarnation. What new territory do you want to explore? Okay, the new frontier where you want to go. And that's really relevant here when we're talking about the pioneer. So let's get into it. Also, there's also the sun as well. So for an artist, you will also want to look at your sun placement. Your sun will show you what it is that you want to express. Your what does your soul want to express? Okay, so even just you know, Rahu and Leo. Look at that. That's an artist right there. Someone who will become obsessed with art and expression and you know, being creative and all that kind of thing. Uh, you know, Rahu and Leo is very much all about that. And look at that, Mercury or Venus are not even there. Okay, so the, as we go through this series, you'll see lots of different ways um, to see yourself. And, you know, you might be, uh, you might find yourself being expanded 
as, as opposed to limited. All right, so now what is a pioneer? So as I said, Rahu, following your desire, following your bliss, going into that new unexplored territory. Okay, and what do we have here? We've got the pioneer, passion for doing and creating what has not been done before. It's the new territory. Okay, so can we formulate a little rule here about the pioneer archetype? Well, we absolutely can. So we definitely know we want to be working with Rahu because Rahu is the unexplored territory in our chart. Now, if you in your chart have Rahu conjunct Rahu's Lord, and I'll show you examples of what that means so you'll be able to see it. If you've got Rahu conjunct Rahu's Lord in this lifetime, you must explore new territory. And these are people who, that's what they do in life. They explore new territory. They create new things. Okay. Uh, so the main rule is Rahu conjunct Rahu's Lord. Sub rules are, and these are, I studied other charts to find these, you know, Maria Montessori. I looked up, looked up Mary Curie. I looked up some other people that I thought were pioneers and, and they exhibited some of these kind of things. So Rahu's Lord, Kendra to Rahu. Also Rahu's Lord, simply in Kendra position. That's pretty good too. But let's take a look at the main rule. All the case studies that I'm about to show you exhibit this main rule. So we're going to take a look at who these people are. I thought it's worth talking about them a bit so that you can see, okay, who are these people? Uh, you can get a feel for them. So the first one is Zoe Sugg. She is a vlogger. Okay, now when I was growing up, there was no such career. It did not exist. And when she was growing up, there was no such career. When she was growing up, there was no YouTube. Okay, so she wasn't making videos and uploading videos. She was making home movies on I think the family camcorder and I think that was back in the day when you had those mini DV tapes and, and things like that so they did have uh, you know of course I think you would put that on VHS tapes videotapes things like that so this is really old school when she was a little girl there was no YouTube so the platform for her success did not even exist okay so she is growing up and what does she do in her life? Well, she starts making these videos. YouTube comes along. And back then, when she started on YouTube, YouTube was not giving you money for your videos. Right now, you can get a little bit of advertising revenue when you upload a video. But when she was uploading videos, there was no advertising revenue at all. Okay. And she would just upload a video every day. She just did it because that's what she wanted to do. And her dad even said to her, I think you should get a job. Don't, don't you think it's time to get a job, you know? And she's like, no, I, I want to make my videos. That's what I want to do. And that's what she did. So we're going to take a look at her chart. I do believe she is a pioneer because she invented a career path that didn't exist, you know, because all of a sudden then YouTube starts to monetize these videos and then all of a sudden, I think she was a 20 something year old young person. She's pulling in tens of thousands of pounds per month. It's just the money's just pouring through the windows and she's going, wow, okay, great. You know, and then she ends up buying this great big house and super young, you know, um, and she's got something like 11 million followers. She's done really, really, really well. And she has been an absolute pioneer here on the internet. So we're going to take a look at her chart. The next one is Dr. Victor Chang. He is a cardiac surgeon. Uh, we've got here pioneer. Yep. So when we look him up on Wikipedia, we've got the word written. So it says here he was a Chinese born Australian cardiac surgeon and a pioneer. There's the word. There's the archetype. That's what I've been looking for. I've looked up so many charts, yeah, in order to find these people. And, and look, look at here we've got a pioneer and it even says so on, on Wikipedia. That's not the most reliable source of information. But uh, here for me now, it is very reliable <laughs> because I identified him as, as a pioneer as well. And he's a pioneer of modern heart transplantation in Australia. Um, we're going to take a look just, just at the pioneering aspect of, of his chart. 
The next one we're going to take a look at is Daniel Boone. Now, his name came into my consciousness recently because I was watching a talk by RFK Jr. and he mentioned Daniel Boone. And when I heard that name, I thought, isn't that a TV show? <laughs> Which is so lame of me, I know. It just goes to show you how little I know about the world and history and all that kind of thing. But see, this is how my angels work because they got me to watch RFK Jr. And they knew I'd hear Daniel Boone. And, and then they knew I'd look up who is Daniel Boone because that's what I did. I thought, oh, I better look him up. And I look him up and it says here he's an American pioneer. And I thought, well, that's handy because I'm currently looking at the pioneer archetype. So we've got here an American pioneer. Okay, so it was this was 1734. We've got his chart. So we're going to take a look at that as well. And the last one I've got for you is Steve Jobs. And Steve Jobs, I do know something about. So as you can see, I know about Zoe Sugg. I don't know much about Dr. Victor Chang or Daniel Boone. This is why I got those little Wikipedia bits to prove to you. Yep, they're pioneers. I can't talk much about them. Steve Jobs, I can talk about. I've studied him in a lot of depth because in the 90s, I was oh, such a fan. I just found him to be so inspiring. And I read his biography. And this was after he left apple you know he, he left apple he actually left he went to run a company i think that was called next and then he was at pixar and then he came back to apple and when he came back to apple then that's when he did i think the ipod and uh, iphone and all these other things but i was kind of obsessed with steve jobs just after he left uh, Apple, you know, the, the very first time when he left. Uh, and he wasn't that famous back then. But I just thought, wow, he's, yeah. And I got this real pioneer feel for him from him because he was the real driving force behind Apple. Now, with Apple's early days, you could think that it was Steve Wozniak. Steve Jobs was part of a creative partnership, really. You know, Steve Wozniak was the guy who, programmed everything and he was the real genius at the beginning he he made the stuff but Steve Jobs had a pioneering vision so and we'll see in his chart you'll see he's got the pioneer archetype so he's not thinking small he doesn't want to be restricted by labels he doesn't want to be you know he's he's big he's expansive he's you know Rahu conjunct Rahu's lord yeah that features in his set of charts so these are the people we're going to take a look at. Shall we take a look at their charts? I think we will. So I'm now going to share. How do I do this? Okay. There we go. So now I'm going to share the charts and show you their charts. So with Zoe Sugg, you know, this is 11th house here. This is really the place of platforms. This is where Saturn uh, builds a new platform in your life, actually. And we've got Saturn very comfortably at home in his own sign Capricorn right here. Most importantly, we've got the pioneer archetype. We've got Rahu conjunct Saturn. Rahu conjunct Saturn here in the 11th house. Okay, so this is her pioneer archetype. Now, if we take a look at her birth chart, you'll see she does not have the artist archetype in her birth chart. She doesn't have any Venus connection really with uh mercury well at least i can't see one if you can you can let me know in the comments below but if we take a look at her d9 she's got venus in virgo okay so that's the artist archetype right there she's also got an exalted moon um, i have seen with writers that just an exalted moon in kendra position is enough to make them a very talented writer uh, in her d10 chart she does have the artist archetype here in gemini in the fourth house so she does have it but in the birth chart we can see here that this young lady was born to be a pioneer she was here to do something bigger to create something incredible okay and that's what she's done and she believed in herself even when someone as close as her father says to her are you sure you should be doing what you're doing you know and she just kept doing what she was doing look at the staying power that's very uh, Saturn. Saturn, you want to see, you know, you will see with a good Saturn there. And hers is in miracle degree as well. If that moves away, there we go. Yeah, that's zero. Wow, look at that. This is beautiful. I mean, it's, we've got an exalted Mars here. I mean, there's so many incredible things here. There's done yoga. 
um, forming here as well. Yes, Mars and Saturn. Mars and Saturn together can produce world fame. I mean, it's just incredible. Okay, so the Dhan Yoga is second lord uh, conjunct the 11th lord here. I mean, we could keep talking about this, this one chart for an hour, you know, but uh, really, really great example of the pioneer archetype. Okay, let's take a look quickly at the rest now. I'm not going to go on too long. Uh, Victor Chang, we can see he's definitely got it. So we've got Rahu conjunct Jupiter here in Sagittarius here in the 12th house. So the focus of the life is in the future. He has to conquer new territory. He has to create something brand new that no one's ever seen or done before. The stars demand it. It's, it's part of his destiny. Okay, we'll take a look at Daniel Boone. Daniel Boone's got the same thing again in the 11th house. It's happening here. So we've got Rahu conjunct Venus in Libra in the 11th house. So Rahu's Lord, right? Venus is here conjunct Rahu. We take a look at Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs is interesting. He doesn't have it in his birth chart. Um, he does have Rahu Lord uh, on the Rahu Ketu axis. Okay, so that's something. But we can really see it here in uh, D10. Okay, we've got Rahu conjunct Jupiter in the 11th house. He's got that pioneer archetype. So guys, I'm going to leave this episode there, but take a look at this and see if you've got this in your chart. If you don't have it, but you want to be a pioneer, be a pioneer anyway. You know, do what calls you, do what excites you. Don't worry too much about the chart. The other thing that um, I would also like to say is that you might see yourself in one of the other archetypes that's coming up. This is a really long series. So, you know, just, just wait. You might see some of your placements play out a little bit later. But you can definitely let me know how you got on with this episode in the comments below. I'm loving the comments section, guys. It's so rich with insights and your observations and so much learning. So please keep all of that going. It's so good. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Mm -hmm.